Okay, Tracy, are you ready? Good morning, Judge. I'm ready. Good morning. Okay. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Harris Adams. I'm the administrative law judge assigned to hear proceeding number 23A0197T. This matter comes on for a pre-hearing conference pursuant to decision R230530I. Call the conference to order and we start with entries of appearance. Morning, Judge. Tom Snyder on behalf of uh, Lumen, the applicant. And, uh, with me today is Tim Conkleman from the business. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, Justin Cox from the Attorney General's Office on behalf of um, Commission Trial staff. Uh, we also have with us Josh Harmon from the Attorney General's Office, as well as Jennifer Kirkland from staff. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Joseph Benkert on behalf of the Boulder Regional Emergency Telephone Service Authority. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Your Honor. Oh, sorry, Tracy. I'm Michelle Singer Nelson um, from the AG's office representing the Utility Consumer Advocate Office. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Tracy Oldemeyer appearing on behalf of the CCOA and LIDA. And also on the call this morning is the chair of CCOA, Kimberly Culp, and she's also the CEO of LIDA. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Thor Nelson for CCTA. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. This is Bart Miller um, with Collins, uh, Cole, Flynn, Wynn, and Ulmer. I'm representing El Paso Teller 911 Authority and Douglas County Emergency Telephone Service Authority. Good morning. Okay, anyone else? Okay, um, so this is, as everyone's familiar, has been quite set for quite some time. Um, and I did notice the uh, an amended application was submitted recently. Um, so I guess if maybe we could start with the, Mr. Schneider, if you can kind of tell me what we've missed in the several months since we've been together and uh, the current posture of the case. Sure, Judge, thanks. Um, in, the, in the amendment that we filed, uh, um, I think it was about 11 days ago, we uh, we kind of spelled out where we were at in terms of um, the work that Lumen's done since we all last got together. Um, as you may recall, the original application filed last year uh, was dependent upon the, uh, I guess, the hope that uh, Lumen would receive funding for one or more, one or more of the three fiber routes that were identified. Um, and as your honor may recall, that did not happen. The parties um, had some preliminary discussions with you, with each other about what to do with this docket. Um, and ultimately, I think consensus was reached that we would keep the docket open while we went back to the drawing board and came up with some new proposals. So that's that's what's happened since the last time we were all together. Um, as noted in our amended application, um, the company scheduled, um, I think, at least nine or maybe more video conference calls with many of the individuals and their um, clients that are that are present today. Um, and during that, you know, various proposals that were loosely based on the FCC audit um, were were discussed about you know additional improvements that could be made to the nine one one network. Um, it, you know, it wasn't perfect. Um, I, we had some good discussions. I think there was some some good input. There was a lot of questions. There was a lot of information that had to be gathered, uh, information that was gathered, information that wasn't available. And so anyway, that all led to essentially the amended application that was filed 11 days ago, which were, um, in, in Lumen's view, the most realistically um, efficient uh, network improvements that could be made. So um, it's it's an amendment because that's kind of the route that 
we had planned to take and we did take. Uh, it looks nothing like the original application that was filed. The route, we do have some new routes. We do have some routes in there, some fiber routes and construction routes in there. They're not and they're not the same as the original three. Um, I do think this probably that therefore needs to be noticed and you know with an opportunity for for additional interveners to to join. I don't know that any will, but um, probably need to do that. Um, and uh, you know I think that's that's where we're at today, and we're ready to move forward. Okay, um, and I, the notice is one one issue uh, uh, on my mind here, I, I may, and I may have missed it, but um, and I'm not asking for binding positions, but generally, is the amended application anticipated to be opposed by the current parties? J Judge Adams, I, I can only say on behalf of CCTA, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. Um, I don't have information from my client yet to answer that. I apologize. Nope, nope, no need to apologize. That's uh, that's kind of why we're here today. And that was, uh, well, I didn't know. So, um, okay. Uh, so I do think we have a notice issue uh, requiring additional notice. Uh, that'll be necessary and, and open the intervention period. I know there's several parties now, but... Uh, I, I agree that 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 is an issue uh, we need to address. Um, I think the um, the second thing I will go ahead and address um, in reviewing the amended application and aligning it with. Rule 2143B4B1. Um, it's not clear to me that the beginning and completion dates of the projects with intermediate milestones for phasing of the projects is clear in the application. Um, and I will likely order that uh, the application be supplemented to address that. Um, and or or to to respond to it, to say to demonstrate that it is. Um, and then uh, after that, we'll see if we get new interveners and before taking any kind of adopting any procedural schedule on the amended application. And then the other main issue I wanted to address today is from the last pre-hearing conference, I thought I made it pretty clear an expectation of the titled applicant in this proceeding uh, being my understanding, Lumen. Um, I am unable to verify uh, anything at the Secretary of State that indicates to me that um, Lumen, in fact, uh, has a trade name on register on file with the Secretary of State of CenturyLink QC, um, and I, I expected that to be addressed in any amended application, and it obviously was not. Um, so I'm going to also be ordering um, that uh, documentation be filed to support that the applicant uh, is the appropriate applicant and that the indication of the uh, trade name is indeed accurate and on file with the Secretary of State. Seems to me those issues should be addressed before we uh, address the notice issue, or issue uh, supplemental notice. And with that, those are the only things I think we really should uh, and can take care of today until the, we address any possible new interventions. So with that, I'll open it up to any party that wishes to address the status, anything else we need to address today. Well, Judge, just quickly on that, we'll, 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 we'll supplement on both those issues uh, as quickly as we can. And if you want to set a deadline that's tight, that's great. Um, there's just the docket, all, I mean, every docket has expediency issues with it. In this one, I think August 1st may be 
the uh, the deadline by which we're going to need a decision in order to under the commission's rule um, enable the um, surcharge any surcharge increase that would go into effect as a result of this plan to to go into effect for next year. So um, I think, and I think I speak for everyone on the call where when I say that you know I think we I we would make a commitment to move quickly in the docket and. Uh, hopefully would, others would as well. Um, well then, I, um, um, I, you're welcome to supplement the application without <laughs> an order requiring you to do so. Right. If you're gonna do that in short order, then uh, that might keep us moving along a little bit quicker. Uh, if you want to let me know when I can anticipate something, I'd be fine. Yeah, why don't, why don't we, is 10 to 7 days, uh, you that good? We'll do 7. Okay. Well, I'll look for that to come in next week. Um, and um, then will address the notice, issue a supplemental notice. Um, I will probably shorten the intervention period slightly uh, just because of the number of parties involved in the, in the scope of the case. Okay, that, uh, that sounds like a little quicker process already, so. Anything else we need to address today? Oh, uh, Ms. Oldemeyer. Uh, Your Honor, uh, Tracy Oldemeyer again, uh, representing CCOA and LIDA. And I concur with Mr. Schneider's comment about kind of the moving parts here with respect to how this might carry over to the annual surcharge proceeding. Um, it looks like based on years past, Normally, mid to late July is when the commissioners adopt a decision to open that proceeding. And in that um, decision, they kind of suggest what the state 911 surcharge should be. And clearly, this improvement plan proceeding plays into that. So I wanted to make sure that um, from our perspective, that um, Your Honor, you asked about whether this would be opposed. We do anticipate a need for some active involvement by the ALJ in this proceeding, not because there's any acrimony, not because there's any uh, overtly adversarial nature, but we have expressed several requests for information about the network that we think are fundamental to help us understand what CenturyLink is prioritizing and why in its improvement plans. And so we do anticipate a need for some discovery and potentially some discovery disputes where the ALJ will need to rule on those. And I didn't want um, that to go um, without putting the, the you Judge Harris on or Judge Adams on notice. Um, and then in addition, we may have experts who will help advise um, you Judge Adams at any evidentiary hearing in the future with respect to some of the requirements under the rule and whether there are more cost-effective potential alternatives or um, third-party resources available. So that was one ask. I just wanted to give you the heads up on the timeline and, and some concerns uh, that my clients may have. And then I also wanted to share the potential of some, some potential good news, um, and that would be on Part of the improvement plan that relates to a new fiber build between Telluride and Norwood. Um, that cost is proposed at about uh, a little over four million dollars and in our effort to help improve the resiliency of the BES network in an efficient and cost-effective manner we learned of a potential opportunity and I emphasize potential opportunity that um, we are going to be asked CenturyLink um, vet and file the information it obtains in this proceeding. So we know whether there is an alternative to tap into existing 
uh, resources in that area. And so what those resources are, Your Honor, is Region 10, um, which is uh, an area of the state that has a collaboration for broadband. They recently built new fiber infrastructure in that area. We sent only the public available information, not the confidential information to them. And the response was a very positive. And they indicate that if CenturyLink could reach out and provide the, the A location to B location they need and the service type and the desired speed that they would prepare a quote, a master service agreement and a service order for that. And so we would really like the opportunity to have that um, vetted uh, in this proceeding to determine if the new fiber build is really necessary or if there's something that could get that area served uh, much more quickly and cost eff effectively. And I'm not quite sure how to ask the judge to order CenturyLink to reach out to Region 10, but I did on Friday share this new information um, with counsel for CenturyLink and Mr. Kunkelman. Okay, well, I'll leave that to the parties for now. I I, uh, I don't see an issue right for me to decide. Um, but I do think that also reminds me, though, is that discovery is currently suspended in the proceeding. Mm -hmm. And um, is there any objection to lifting that suspension of discovery? Hearing none, uh, I think that's appropriate. Um, and so that will be lifted out of today's meeting for conference. And okay. Anything further? All right then. Well, I thank everyone for participating, getting on this conference. I'll look for uh, supplemental filing within a week and uh, then we'll go from there. All right. I wish you all a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're in recess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.